Did you know that social media were banning accurate and truthful information about vaccines and the pandemic? Yeah, we did already know that. Yeah, well now everybody knows. <laughs> Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom. Together, we can break through the shell that they're trying to place around us. The edifice that they put in front of truth is beginning to crack. Even though I know it's hard for you, even though I know that sometimes you want to lean into hatred or despair or anger, this is a time for optimism. This is a time for truth. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe to this channel right now because the algorithm is our enemy and only you can ensure that you see the fantastic content that we make for you every day. So so that we can tell you important and vital truths. Today's story is a fantastic one. Did you know that social media companies were censoring truthful, accurate information about vaccines and the COVID pandemic because it didn't suit their narrative? That means that when they're talking about misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, galinformation, bi-information, tri-information, saying they're just trying to protect us, we're just trying to protect you. No, they were not doing that. They were trying to control the narrative for an affair ends. The revelations in the Twitter files are making that clearer and clearer and we're going to tell you more about it right now. This is Alex Berenson writing on Substack. On August the 27th 2021, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, a Pfizer director with over 550,000 Twitter followers, saw a tweet he didn't like. You should try living in my world. I see about a thousand every day I don't like. A tweet that might hurt sales of Pfizer's mRNA vaccines. Oh, so it's an economic decision, not a health decision. Oh, so Pfizer are a profit-driven company, not a medicine organization. All that time they were saying follow the science, what were they really following? Which science? Economics. The tweet explained that natural immunity after COVID infection was superior to vaccine protection. It called on the White House to follow the science and exempt people with natural immunity from upcoming vaccine mandates. You can go back and look at our videos from that time. We were talking about that then because you told us to. We were talking about natural immunity. We were tiptoeing around it carefully. What do you think? You know, trying to walk on the eggshell they lay down before us. Well, it turns out you were right. You've always known you were right. And now we have the evidence to demonstrate that you were correct all along. It came not from an anti-vaxxer like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. <laughs> but from Dr. Brett Giroir, a physician who had briefly followed Gottlieb as the head of the Food and Drug Administration. Further, the tweet actually encouraged people who did not have natural immunity to get vaccinated. How tight were the lines of censorship that even if the tweet recognized recommends that you get a vaccination, it's still not good enough. It's still not an ardent enough vow to the agenda of the system. Also, this person was a former head of the FDA. Now, we've done videos where we're critical of the FDA because they get much of their funding from the organisations that they're supposed to be regulating. But if in their eyes, a former head of the FDA can't be trusted, then who can be trusted? It's not some, you know, whack job or Alex Jones or David Icke or some crackpot. You can't trust them. They're lunatics. It's the former head of the FDA according to their analysis. So it just shows you they will censor anybody who stands in the way of their agenda. And their agenda is about profit and power. It always was. It always will be. And you should only listen to ideas that are about attacking those systems of power. If what you're being offered is this is how you can reorganize things without disrupting the interests of the powerful, you're probably getting a message that's coming from the powerful. No matter. By suggesting some people might not need COVID vaccinations, the tweet could raise questions about the shot. I mean, what is this? Is this a religion now? To suggest that some people might not need COVID vaccinations has to be censored. What the hell is it? How extreme is this? What is this? Vaccine ISIS? Which sounds like a pretty good disease. Besides being a former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor and a prominent voice on COVID public policy, Gottlieb was a senior board member at Pfizer, which depended on mRNA jabs for almost half of its $81 billion in sales in 2021. Pfizer paid Gottlieb $365,000 for his work that year. But I'm sure that didn't influence his enthusiasm Enthusiasm. This is just a guy who wants people to have vaccines for the good of their health. Oh no, oh no, this other guy who's worked at the FDA and stuff, his views are going to prevent people that really need vaccines. And that, yes, yes, I suppose they are profitable and I suppose I do get that 365 grand a year from Pfizer, but none of that matters to me. All I want is people to be censored so that they can be helped. When people want to censor you for your own good, think about what's being suggested by that. They think they know more than you. They think they're smarter than you. And when they're also being paid to have that opinion, 
it makes me question its validity. Gottlieb stepped in. You bet he did. Emailing Todd O'Boyle, a top lobbyist in Twitter's Washington office, who is also Twitter's point of contact with the White House. The post was corrosive, Gottlieb wrote. He worried it would end up going viral and driving news coverage. These people are obsessed with infectious diseases. Through JIRA, an internal system Twitter used for managing complaints, O'Boyle forwarded Gottlieb's email to the Twitter strategic response team. That group was responsible for handling concerns from the company's most important employees and users. Please see this report from the former FDA commissioner, O'Boyle wrote, failing to mention that Gottlieb was a Pfizer board member with a financial interest in pushing mRNA shots. <laughs> boss, boss, this just in. Apparently someone's posting some disinformation. Who sent you this complaint? It doesn't matter. There's nothing about the person that sent this complaint that's a cause for interest. Whether it's their agenda, their financial ties to Pfizer, their willingness to censor information <laughs> that's plainly true. You're focusing on the wrong thing, boss. A strategic response analyst quickly found the tweet did not violate any of the company's misinformation rules. Oh, well, that's good. So just leave that there. Doesn't violate any of the rules. Just leave it there. I mean, we can't all just agree with each other all the time. I mean, I suppose the point of Twitter is to have a conversation and wouldn't it be good if that conversation was expansive and included a wide variety of views so that people could come towards truth together. Uh, I don't think so. Yet yeah, Twitter wound up flagging Juror's tweet anyway. Yeah, just do it anyway. Just censor it. I think they like doing it, don't they? Putting a misleading tag on it and preventing almost anyone from seeing it. What if we were to prevent almost anyone from seeing it? Yeah, that would be good. Even though it's true, even though it's true. Even though the complaint came from someone with a vested and financial interest in Pfizer doing well and people taking those jabs, I'm going to keep saying yes to you. Gottlieb is not just a Pfizer board member. Oh no, that's just first among his many achievements in life. He is one of seven members of the board's executive committee and the head of its regulatory and compliance committee, which oversees compliance with laws, regulations and internal procedures applicable to pharmaceutical sales and marketing activities. But you think that that would somehow bias it? You think because Gottlieb oversees compliance laws, regulations, internal procedures applicable to pharmaceutical sales and marketing activities, that he'd have a vested interest in preventing people from considering natural immunity as an option? His censorship of that tweet was a surprise for your birthday and you ruined it. You're just like your Pfizer. Pfizer has a long history of violating drug industry laws and ethics rules. So maybe don't get a tattoo of their logo on your body. In 2009, it agreed to pay $2.3 billion, the largest healthcare fraud settlement in American history, up against a pretty hot competition, may I say, for fraudulently marketing several drugs. In 1996, it conducted a clinical trial of an antibiotic in Nigeria in which 11 children died and which became the inspiration for John le Carre's novel The Constant Gardener. But just because they marketed a drug that killed some children, that doesn't mean they're anything other than good guys who should be allowed to censor content that you look at because you are an idiot and not capable of making decisions that might lead to the death of 11 children in Nigeria, which they did do. Gottlieb, eh? At very least there's a conflict of interest that the mainstream media will surely be very interested in investigating. Let's see how they get to the bottom of it. Give them hell, guys! Doctor, uh, we go way back. I don't know how many times during the pandemic you were on, or probably three times a week. You turned into a security blanket for us, and, and I think for viewers uh, everywhere. I mean, I'd want him as a security blanket. It looks too much like Eddie Munster. Please don't run away. And, and it, the entire time, I don't ever think you dodged the question or politicized the question. You talked about the, the origins and were very straightforward about what could have happened, what didn't. You talked about the efficacy of the vaccines and masks. All these areas are completely uncontroversial. So uncontroversial you wouldn't need anyone to censor tweets or control the narrative because, yeah, whether it's masks, the origin of COVID, the efficacy of the vaccine, there's just literally nothing else to learn on any of those subjects. And that's why we're lucky to have a security blanket that looks like a vampire and a raven had an albino baby. Please don't run away. Uh, you'd go against the conventional thinking. I, I, I think it was all science-based and totally objective. Science-based and objective. Often, when I work at a place that gives me $375,000 a year, I see my objectivity just becomes that much clearer. So I got to ask you about this. I have no doubt that you want to weigh in on it. Uh, so on Tucker Carlson last night, uh, New York Times reporter, former New York Times reporter Alec Berenson. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> former New York Times because, you know, the mainstream media, as you yourself know, Chuck or Jad or whatever monosyllabic name you've got, no, is a reliable place for good information, Alec. Alex Berenson. And you got him kicked off of Twitter. Uh, this is a kind of a convoluted conspiracy theory that somehow you told Twitter to get rid of him because he was asking too many questions about the efficacy. God! 
Totally he wouldn't do that. Look how tightly he squeezes his lips together. Look how much he purses his lips like Simon Cowell's Transylvanian brother. Please don't run away. And safety of the COVID vaccine. Do you just want to respond to that and tell us your side? Yeah, look, I'm not going to comment directly on that. And, and he's threatening litigation, too. For no, so another reason not to respond. I've raised concerns around social media broadly, and I've done it on these networks around the threats that were being made on these um, on these platforms and the inability of these platforms to police direct threats, physical threats about people. There's two things, two things that are a menace on social media. One is physical threats. Yeah, we all agree with that. No one wants physical threats. We're right, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second thing is former FDA directors saying that natural immunity might be as effective as vaccines. Yeah, yeah there's no drop off between this physical threats then there's former FDA directors saying natural immunity might be as effective as vaccines. They're basically the two things. The next thing after that is murder. Um, that's my concern around social media and what's going on in that ecosystem. So it wasn't as much about, and you know what? I, I had COVID, I had three vaccines. How's those vaccines working? The, the vaccine, the, those were one of the great scientific discoveries of our, and I've seen all the, I still see it. I said, it does this, it does that. We didn't know this, we didn't do that. All of that, all of that stuff. 100 billion profits, 75 years, you can see the information. I've seen it. I've seen all the information and I still don't care. That's how stupid I'm willing to be. That's the way that it, it, for me, it was basically like a mild cold because I think of, of the vaccine. So I'm not questioning that. So you were, look, look you were. Oh, oh shit. Oh no. It's a bad cold. Cause if it was just a little cold, you wouldn't need that. Ah! I'm unconconcerned about debate. I'm unconcerned about debate taking place in platforms. Because I censor any information that I don't like personally because of my relationships within Twitter, which is totally corrupt. I, I am very see. concerned yeah. when threats I'm very concerned with threats. Very concerned with threats. And also, as I said, the FDA and saying natural immunity. Threats and the natural immunity. That's the two things. This had to do with I'm the very answers. concerned about physical threats. Very concerned about... He's panicking now, isn't he? He's gone too far. He knows that a lie is near the center. Physical threats. Very... Vaccinate me now! It was all my own fault. I was acting like a real dope. Being made against people's safety and the people who gin up those threats against individuals. Okay. That concerns me. It's just the righteousness. There's a person that's actually done things like going, hey, listen, can you get that other dude off because that's going to affect sales? Acting like he's sort of Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Additionally, according to a bombshell new report by Just the News, the Biden White House put immense pressure on Facebook to remove often true content, according to bombshell new documents obtained in a federal censorship collusion lawsuit by Missouri and and Louisiana attorneys general. In recently released documents, White House Director of Digital Strategy Rob Flaherty put a huge amount of pressure on Facebook to remove a Washington Post article on vaccine hesitancy. So they're removing posts of former FDA officials within social media. Now the White House are directly removing things from the mainstream media. And of course, you can assume that if these practices are taking place here, do you imagine that these are the only two examples? Or do you imagine that it's cultural, institutional, normal, regular business practice to remove information that's not expedient. Let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat. Do you think that the only information you're allowed access to is the information that's amenable to their agenda and objectives, which are about power and profit? Let me know in the chat. In a March 14, 2021 email with the subject line, you are hiding the ball, uh, White House Director of Digital Strategy, Rob Flaherty, showed a Facebook executive a Washington Post article on Facebook's research into drivers of vaccine hesitancy on its own platform, including fears of worse than expected adverse events. In the email thread was also President Biden's COVID response team senior advisor, Andy Slavitt. The Facebook executive, whose name was redacted, replied to the email saying there was a misunderstanding. Flaherty then fired back, telling the executive that he's been asking you guys pretty directly about the extent to which borderline content is creating vaccine hesitancy. We are gravely concerned. Facebook is a top driver of vaccine hesitancy and want to know if you're trying, Flaherty continued as he put pressure on Facebook to censor COVID information. The executive agreed Facebook needs to share information faster with the White House and a week later provided a list of changes Facebook was making. One of them was reducing the virality of content discouraging vaccines that does not otherwise violate a policy but can be framed as sensation, alarmist or shocking. Facebook then responded to Flaherty with next steps where they would censor often true content just because the White House didn't like it. 
So there you have it. That's a direct quote. Often true content just because the White House didn't like it. Hey, I don't like that. But uh, it's true. That's why we don't like it. So you want us to censor it? Yep, that's how the system works. So of course, everything we've been experiencing over the last couple of years, the suspicion, the doubt, the hesitancy, the curiosity, the necessity for a conversation, the need for opposing scientific views to be tried out and tested in the place of true science, experimentation, authenticity, transparency, Transparency, honesty. You were right. You knew all along and now it's been proven. That's exactly how the system works. In a sense, the pandemic was a great privilege, a great luxury, because it was a revelation of what many of us have long suspected, that there is a globalist agenda. That's how the globe was able to respond to a pandemic. Admittedly, in the event of a genuine pandemic, a global response would be necessary, advisable, expedient, in fact. But when you see these kind of exchanges, it shows you that the White House and social media companies are in lockstep when it comes to controlling the narrative. Not only that, the mainstream media are involved and of course there are corporate interests. What other than that are we telling you on this channel? What other than that are you discussing in the comments below? And of course, anybody who conveys these counter narratives, because we cannot be censored and controlled because we're bloody careful and we use reliable sources and we try not to slip up, you have to label us conspiracy theorists. That's why you have to be called conspiracy theorists. That's why we have to be called conspiracy theorists. Why? Because we're telling the truth and the truth is at odds with their agenda. This is a quote from that email. As you know, in addition to removing vaccine misinformation, we have been focused on reducing the virality of content discouraging vaccines that does not contain actionable misinformation. So it's discouraging, but it's true. So just let me say that again. It's discouraging, but it's true. Censor it! This is often true content, which we allow at the post level because experts have advised us that it is important for people to be able to discuss both their personal experiences and concerns about the vaccine. You shouldn't need an expert for that. That's just what communication is supposed to be. We got an expert in and the expert said you shouldn't censor people telling the truth about their experience of being alive because that would be, well, tyranny. Yeah, that's the one we're going for. The last word you said, tyranny. There you go. You keep saying it, but you're not doing it. But it can be framed as sensation, alarmist or shocking. We'll remove these groups, pages and accounts when they are disproportionately promoting this sensationalized content. More on this front as we proceed to implement. Did you, during the pandemic, think the information that was true was being censored? Did you notice that discussion was being shut down? Did you get called a conspiracy theorist for saying and believing those very things and other things that have since been proven to be true? Well, let's learn from this. Is there anything going on at the moment that you're not allowed to discuss where it seems that there's an agenda? Of course there is. Every single issue is framed in this manner. Every single issue is presented to you in a manner that's amenable to the interests of the powerful. What do you think power is other than the ability to control outcomes? What are the means of controlling outcomes? Control the power, control the messaging, censor opposition, demonize dissenters. All we're doing is describing exactly what's happening. Thank you for being on this journey with us. Thank you for keeping us informed. Let's not give up now. Even though it may feel darker, it's about to get a lot brighter for all of us. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the chat. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these ones. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now because obviously the algorithm's against us because we are against the machine and we need you on our side. Stay free.